So we're heading out a bit later than expected. It's almost, it's two o'clock now, which means that we're going to be driving into the night, unfortunately. That is something that I definitely prefer not to do. However, I'm going to have to break one of my own rules this time. Once we're on the tar road though, that is a main highway through the country. And certainly on the way to Gweru, the road, last time I drove it was very good. It's not rural area, so we don't expect to come across a lot of livestock, goats, cattle. We don't expect to see a lot of people in the form of pedestrians. There will of course be more traffic vehicle wise, but that's to be expected. Our snacks are prepared, our lunch is prepared, we've got our drinks ready. So hoping not to have to stop a lot along the way. We will of course have to stop for fuel. That's inevitable. That's part of the course and that's something we're going to have to do, but so be it. It's about an eight hour slog from here to Gweru. So it's going to be quite a long drive. So wish us luck. Had a nice stop in Gweru, a couple of days spent with family, some home cooked meals, which is very nice. Cleaned up a little bit as well, so looking semi human again. And we are now on our way to Huange National Park, which is one of our last destinations. Reasonably early start, so we should get there well before sunset to set up camp. So, Huange is a pretty easy to reach destination from where we live in Gweru. It's Tar Road all the way to Buloa and then Tar Road all the way to Hwange. There's an alternative route which I don't know very well so we're not going to chance that and it's still about the same time. The alternative route does go through quite a bit of rural area which you know livestock and all that sort of stuff is not ideal. Very excited to be going into Hwange National Park. This is the largest national park in Zimbabwe and reportedly it has very high elephant concentration and also very high concentration of large predators, lions, leopards, a number of wild dog as well or painted dog as they are now more commonly known. It is the rainy season of course which means that it's a bit more difficult to see wildlife, the bush is thicker, they're also more spread out in the bush because there's more water available but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> We're in the western section, or rather the northwestern section to be more accurate, of Wangi National Park. The park's 14,600 square kilometers, so it's a fair size national park. So what we're seeing is just a small section of it really. This area, the northwestern section, is Mopani woodland. It's not that thick. There's much thicker Mopani woodland that we've been through, like in Chizarira, for example, and the parts of Mandapuls that are out of the floodplains, and the same goes with Matusadona. So it's not that thick, and you do get to see quite a bit of wildlife through the, the felt as you look through the felt. This time of year, though, a lot of the larger wildlife, like the elephants, etc., go further in or further east because there's a lot more water available, and so they can migrate or roam further into the park. So we're not seeing as much wildlife as you might see here in the drier parts of the year. And that would typically be winter, so June, July, August into spring, September, October. And that is especially the case here because in that time the, the animals tend to concentrate in the western sections here where there's access to water. And as it starts to rain, they go deeper into the park. There are of course some sections of the park and some sections of the roads where you're going to come across clay which could be difficult in the rainy season but so far most of what we're driving it hasn't rained for a couple of days just to put that caveat in is quite easy driving we haven't come across a lot of mud we've seen a couple of small patches of mud here and there or mud that's dried up here and there but it's generally quite easy driving now of all the national parks in Zimbabwe, this is probably one of the easier to reach destinations. 
it is a fair drive from Bulawayo, for example, which is the nearest city. And it's an even further drive from Harare, which is the capital city. However, it's basically tarred road most of the way to get here. Some of the other parks we've been to, like Chisarira and Matusadona, are very remote and difficult to get to. It's not difficult to get to, but it's all dirt roads to get to then. It's quite slow going. So it's actually relatively easy to get to Hwange. There are numerous places to stay in Hwange National Park. There are a number of lodges and campsites. We, of course, are staying at Robbins campsite. There's a lodge there as well. It's a big park, so you have a lot of options. The main camp is about 122 kilometers from where we are. If you're driving through the parks, that gives you some perspective on the size of the park and the sort of area that it encompasses. Reportedly at the main camp, there is fuel available and there is a shop so you can get some basic groceries and so on too. So a couple of things to note, some tips of importance. It's very hot here, especially in the summer. Temperatures easily go up into the upper 30s. So sunscreen, of course, if you're prone to sunburn, dehydration is a potential issue as well. It's also quite humid. So be very careful of dehydration. This is also a malaria zone, especially now in the summertime, in the rainy season. There are a lot of mosquitoes around us at night. It's not so much an issue in the daytime. So you definitely need to be prepared for that. And I absolutely recommend that you have a mosquito repellent if you're going to be staying in this area. Lots of mosquitoes at night. We've just been to Big Tom's viewing platform, which is overlooking a watering hole with a set of solar pumps. Because it's a rainy season, of course, there is a lot of water flowing into the place anyway, in the natural stream that it's in. But it looks like it'd be a really great place to come in the dry season because I can imagine that a lot of animals would be forced to congregate where there is water and that looks like a great spot for that. The area here is relatively open in comparison to much of what we've seen so far. So that's quite nice as well. But it's relatively open because it's kind of marshy and clay. So that's not so nice uh, now that it's raining and stuff. <laughs> But it's really beautiful. Fortunately, we've missed the rain, but we also seem to have missed the animals. So we've seen some roan antelope, which is nice. And we've seen some reed buck. We've seen a couple of birds. We've seen an African crake. Nice to see a crowned crane and captured on camera for the first time. That was really cool. But otherwise, not much. I'm going to say it's probably because it's the wrong time of year. But it's, we haven't seen a lot of animals. It's hoping to see more. It's hoping to see elephants again today, at least. We haven't seen more. We've driven through a lot of marshy area, a lot of open plains quite marshy, quite clay, a little bit wet, lots of grass. We've driven through woodland as well, but uh, we haven't seen much in the way of wildlife. We've seen a lot of birds, but we haven't seen much in the way of large wildlife. So a little bit underwhelmed. I was hoping to see more in the Great Wange National Park and uh, could be that we've been unlucky. More likely we're just here at the wrong time of year. But it's, uh, it's been a little bit underwhelming. So back to camp, final night. And we'll get up tomorrow morning, breakfast, do the final packing get on the road off to Matobo National Park and we will also try and make the most of that the last two days of our trip so we've got to go out of the bank and then from there to Bite Bridge uh, hopefully the Bite Bridge crossing will be quick <laughs> but we'll know soon now we've got to reverse down this rather narrow eroded track so yeah it's not fun 
but yeah, a bit disappointed. Was really looking forward to seeing that particular cave, and we've driven quite a significant way to get here, but nah, not happening. <laughs>